First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for their kind invitation to this nice workshop. In my talk, I will discuss about surface operators and duality relations in N equals two uh, gauge uh, theories. And most of what I'm going to say is based on uh, a few papers uh, we have been written in collaboration with uh, Bilo and uh, Frau uh, from Torino and a group of Sujaya Shok and his uh, students from Chennai, India. But actually, it builds on a very vast literature, some of which I'm going to refer along the way. This is more or less the plan of what I'm going to say. We'll start with uh, some introductory remarks. Then I will uh, discuss uh, surface operators in N equals two gauge theories in four dimensions and uh, duality relations. And finally, I will present my conclusions. Well, the study of how a quantum field theory responds to the presence of defects has attracted a lot of attention in the last years. Defects can be seen as disturbances in a field theory supported on sub-manifolds of the space-time where the theory is defined. And they can be used as useful probes to detect some of the properties of the theory. Perhaps uh, the simplest uh, uh, and almost a trivial example of a defect uh, is uh, a point-like operator, a zero-dimensional uh, defect, uh, which is localized in a point. And if we put many of these uh, defects in space-time, then we, gain, uh, we can get uh, some information about the theory by considering the correlation functions. A uh, one-dimensional uh, generalization of uh, this defect is uh, uh, a line operator, like the Wilson lines that we uh, heard a lot about uh, in this workshop yesterday. They are one-dimensional uh, defects. Surface operators are uh, the two-dimensional generalizations of these. And uh, we can even uh, think about uh, a three-dimensional generalization domain walls. And if we are discussing a theory in four space-time dimension, this list is exhaustive. In my talk, I will concentrate on these surface operators. In general, these defects can be given different descriptions. One way is to modify the path integral of the quantum field theory by imposing a singular behavior on the fields uh, around the defect. Another way is uh, to uh, consider the defect as a, the, uh, as a supporting uh, theory, uh, low dimensional uh, theory with uh, some degrees of freedom, which are coupled in a non-trivial way with uh, the bulk theory in four dimensions. If uh, we embed our theories in uh, a string theory realization, then uh, we can uh, think of introducing these uh, defects uh, by adding extra brains, uh, D brains or N brains, to represent uh, the defect itself. There may be other mod mo modes uh, to describe uh, these uh, defects. Uh, and uh, today I will concentrate essentially on the first uh, two, uh, looking in particular at surface operators. So surface operators in a four-dimensional uh, uh, theory are uh, non-local operators uh, which are supported on a two-dimensional sub-manifold of space-time. For simplicity, I take the space-time to be R4, and uh, the two-dimensional sub-manifold where the defect is uh, uh, localized as a, a two-dimensional plane. So this is uh, uh, a picture of R4. This is uh, the R2, where uh, the defect uh, is extended, and uh, this is uh, the transverse uh, plane. These uh, um, surface operators, uh, as I said before, uh, can be used as probes uh, to detect uh, some of the non-trivial properties of the theories. They are sort of thermometers uh, for the quantum field theory. They can be used uh, to define order parameters uh, in the sense that when they are introduced in the path integral, they can provide valuable information 
on the quantum field theory, like the structure of phases uh, and even non-perturbative features uh, that may be not accessible with uh, Wilson lines uh, or Toft lines uh, or other kinds of uh, operators. So they are very, uh, very useful. And as I mentioned before, there are two main ways of describing these defects, in particular the surface operators, namely as a singularities for the gauge field, or in general the fields that you have in the theory, in particular for the gauge field, along the surface where uh, uh, the operator is defined. And I will refer to this uh, picture as uh, the picture of a monotromy defect or as a, a non-trivially coupled 2D, 4D system, namely a theory in two dimensions, which is uh, coupled in a non-trivial way with a gauge theory in four dimension. And I will refer to this as a coupled 2D, 4D system. And uh, the purpose of uh, this talk is to try to clarify the relation between these two descriptions uh, and establish a precise uh, correspondence. So let me start with the first approach in which the defects are seen as monodromy defects. Take a gauge theory with a gauge group SUN, and we can introduce a surface defect in this four-dimensional theory by assigning a non-trivial behavior of the gauge field when we go around the defect. So uh, this is uh, the plane transverse to the defect. Therefore, the surface operator here is a point. And if we move around that point and encircle it, and theta is the phase in this plane, then uh, if we want to preserve supersymmetries, we can assign uh, to the gauge field a be non-trivial behavior like this, where these gammas are parameters. They have to adapt to uh, zero because we are in SUN, but they can be different and they can be grouped into different sets with uh, entries uh, which are N1 here, N2, and so on, so that uh, the total sum of these is N. So our SUN gauge field, uh, SUN gauge group uh, actually is broken into a product of uh, several U1 factors uh, with the uh, ranks uh, corresponding to these uh, numbers, and one and two and uh, so on. This is sometimes called the Levi decomposition of uh, SU, SUN. The presence of these uh, U, uh, U, uh, unitary factors uh, and the fact that we have a two-dimensional plane which is different from uh, the rest of four dimensions uh, allows us uh, to uh, introduce uh, 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 new terms in the path integral because we can have uh, a non-trivial uh, uh, churn class uh, in two dimensions. Uh, so we can have uh, magnetic fluxes for these uh, uh, UN uh, uh, gauge fields, which are quantized. Uh, and because of the original SUN condition, the sum of this number has to be zero. So in the path integral, because Besides the usual instanton-like factors that we can uh, insert uh, with the second chain class with the gauge coupling constant uh, to uh, weight in a different way the different topological sectors of the, of the theory, in this case we can also insert uh, uh, other types of factors related to these uh, numbers so with uh, some parameters which I called uh, eta. Actually, the fact that uh, there is uh, this uh, non-trivial behavior for the gauge field uh, here, and the fact that there is uh, this quantization condition can be used to show that the usual second chain class is not just uh, an integer k, but actually as a shift, which uh, uh, has this form where these m are this uh, uh, magnetic fluxes, and these gammas are the parameters I introduced before. That means that uh, when we introduce uh, these factors in the path integral, we have a sort of an instant on light weight, which uh, is modified, as I said before, with uh, these extra pieces. And using this, uh, this uh, result, uh, we see that uh, this uh, weight factor actually uh, 
as uh, the usual form, uh, 2 pi i tau, tau, the gauge coupling times an integer number k, plus uh, a new type of contribution in which uh, you see uh, there is uh, this uh, combination of the gauge coupling and the other parameters which are specific to the surface operators. So the weight in which uh, we can insert in the path integral has this form. So we don't have anymore a single gauge coupling and a single um, topological number k, but we have uh, other parameters uh, and other integers, uh, mi's. That means uh, that the instant on partition function for the, this uh, theory becomes uh, like this with this weight and with uh, a suitable and a trivial change of variables, it can be repackaged in a different form by introducing uh, m, m was the number of factors in which the original group is broken by the presence of the defect, by introducing m parameters which weight the different individual instantons. These are called ramified instantons, and this is the ramified instanton partition function. Notice that I have m of these uh, weights, and the product of them is the usual instanton weight. It is as if the ordinary instanton uh, that we know in four dimension is uh, broken into uh, little pieces. Just like the ordinary instanton partition function, also this ramified instanton partition function can be explicitly computed using equivariant localization methods, uh, Alan Ekrasov, and actually that was done uh, a few years ago by Kano and Tachikawa uh, using an orbifold uh, method. In the usual, uh, uh, as you well know, Nekrasov approach, one uh, deforms uh, the space-time by introducing the omega background, and then uh, that allows uh, to resolve the singularities, uh, to compute uh, the determinant uh, and uh, the result of integration over the moduli of the instanton becomes uh, a simple matrix model. Similarly, for this ramified instanton partition function, Kano and Tachikawa told us uh, that uh, we can uh, do uh, a similar construction by taking an orbifold, an orbifold uh, Zm. Again, uh, the m is the number of pieces in which the gauge group is broken. Usually, when you take the orbifold in the Nekrasov approach, uh, you mod out uh, the uh, space uh, which is a transverse to the space-time where the theory is defined. Here it's uh, an orbifold in which uh, the orbifold parities act partly on the space-time. So this uh, C times C is the space-time which is uh, deformed by the omega background. This is the two-dimensional plane where the defect is and the transverse direction actually is a non- uh, non-trivially acted by the uh, ZM orbifold. If we introduce this uh, uh, vacuum expectation values for the four-dimensional gauge fields, then this uh, becomes an explicitly calculable uh, uh, quantity, and you get uh, the so-called ramified instanton partition function. From this uh, instanton partition function, by taking uh, the log, you obtain information about the non-perturbative uh, quantities uh, in the effective theory. In the limit in which the omega background goes to zero, so the epsilon parameter goes go to zero, you have the usual uh, one over epsilon one, epsilon two term, and the coefficient in front is uh, what you would call the prepotential that describes the infrared dynamics in the four-dimensional uh, theory. But now there is a subleading term, 1 over epsilon 1, and the coefficient in, in front is what we call a twisted superpotential. That describes, in a non-trivial way, the infrared dynamics on, on the defect. And the reason why is that, because this 1 over epsilon 1, epsilon 2 is actually, in this uh, Nekrasov-like approach, a way of uh, rewriting uh, the super volume in four dimensions. Uh, this is the 4x, uh, the zero mode uh, uh, related to the centers of the instantons, and these are the super partners. And this epsilon 1 uh, is uh, the two-dimensional analog of that. And if you look at uh, the details of the spinners, uh, actually you see a d theta, d theta bar, so it's actually a twisted 
super potential. But uh, it gives the same kind of information for the two-dimensional uh, part of, of the theory. For example, if you take uh, the simplest uh, case in which you start with an SU2 theory and uh, you introduce a defect, the only one that you can introduce that breaks SU2 into U1 cross U1, then going through this procedure, you obtain a very explicit expression where A is uh, the vacuum switching value of SU2 and Q1 and Q2 are the two uh, primified instant on weights. And by extracting the one over epsilon one term, uh, you get uh, the, an explicit expression for uh, the instanton part of the superpotential. And then you have uh, higher instanton corrections as well. Question is, uh, can we calculate uh, this uh, W, this effective superpotential, which describes the dynamics in this uh, two-dimensional uh, uh, surface inside the four-dimensional theory in a different way and to get uh, some more physical intuition. And uh, the answer is uh, yes, if we look at uh, the surface defect from uh, the other uh, point of view. Namely, uh, to consider the presence of a two-dimensional uh, theory coupled with a four-dimensional uh, system. So we start with a four-dimensional theory with gauge group SUN, and we couple it to, because of the amount of supersymmetry that we want, to a 2,2 two-dimensional gauge linear sigma model in which G is a global symmetry. That is a simple, simple example of this, which is to consider SU2 and a sigma model, a CP1 a sigma model coupled to it with SU2 flavor symmetry, which is another way of saying that we consider a U1 gauge theory in two dimension with chiral field in the fundamental of SU2. And I can draw this picture to represent such a theory, this round node here is a two-dimensional uh, uh, U1 gauge theory. One is because it's a U1, which has uh, this SU2 as uh, a flavor symmetry. But actually, this SU2 is not just a flavor symmetry for the U1 theory. It's also a four-dimensional gauge theory. So how can we describe such a coupled system? Well, if we understand that the flavor symmetry, the SU2 node, simply as a, as a flavor symmetry, then we can uh, use some old results and write the effective twisted superpotential for uh, this uh, two-dimensional gauge theory. This was worked long ago by Dada, Davis, Di Vecchia, and others, generalizing the uh, veneziano yankelovich approach for the anomaly term, and you get the effective twisted superpotential, which has a classical part in which T plays the role of the complexified Fallier Iliopoulos. This is a U1 theory. Sigma is the twisted chiral superfield. And this is the result of integrating the fluctuations, the quantum fluctuation. It's a sigma log sigma structure. It's the two-dimensional analog of the more familiar uh, phi square log phi structure that you have uh, in four dimensions for the effective low energy uh, theory of the peak potential. This is uh, a purely two-dimensional point of view. As I said, this is the twisted chiral superfield of U1. This is the Iliopoulos coupling. This two is because you have two flavors. Uh, and this is uh, the ultraviolet scale. But as I told you, the SU2 node is actually a four-dimensional theory. So this has its own fields. It's not only a group. It's a four-dimensional theory with the gauge fields, scalars, and so on. So there is a possibility of upgrading this effective twisted superpotential by considering the SU2 node as a four-dimensional theory. And for instance, by moving in the Coulomb branch of this SU2 four-dimensional theory, namely by giving expectation values to the scalar fields, then we can modify the effective dynamics in two dimensions. The expectation values of these scalar fields, as pointed out by Anani and Ori, long ago, uh, actually 
serve as a twisted masses uh, for uh, the twisted chiral uh, field. But uh, this is uh, halfway, because we are uh, coupling a theory with a four-dimensional bulk theory, but we are treated, treating this uh, theory only classical. The full step uh, is uh, by considering uh, the full quantum uh, uh, theory of SU2 and then promote uh, this uh, classical vacuum expectation value to a full four-dimensional uh, quantum expectation value. And this was pointed out a few years ago by Gaiotto, Gukov, and Seiberg, and then used by many others. So this is the effective superpotential, which describes a U1 chiral field with a Faye Lyopoulos coupling T with an SU2 four-dimensional theory. So it has all features of the two-dimension, but also the four-dimensional quantum theory. And uh, if uh, we are describing a surface defect, uh, that should correspond to the monodromy defect in the, in the other picture that corresponds to the breaking of SU2 to U1 cross U1. Is it possible to make uh, a quantitative check of this uh, correspondence? And uh, the answer is yes, and it goes as follows. We take uh, this uh, twisted superpotential and uh, first of all, we notice that we can uh, uh, take uh, this uh, classical part inside the log by introducing uh, the dynamically generated scale in two dimension. Uh, this is uh, the right uh, coefficient for the beta function. And uh, so this is the more compact form of the twisted superpotential. And then we can analyze uh, the vacuum of such uh, superpotential. So we can compute dW over the sigma equals zero up to factors of two pi i. So the vacuum equation is actually more uh, correctly written in this form. Uh, we have seen this also uh, yesterday in some talks, uh, which uh, using the specific form of uh, W, in this case, uh, takes uh, this. And then uh, we can uh, solve explicitly this equation by using uh, uh, the full knowledge of the quantum uh, uh, four-dimensional uh, theory provided by the Cyber-Witten solution. So we write the Cyber-Witten curve for the SU2 theory, which is uh, given here. This is the characteristic polynomial appearing for the SU2 cyber witten theory. This is pure SU2. And uh, this is uh, the scale in four dimension that goes with the beta function in four dimension. So this is the characteristic polynomial. This is uh, the quantum parameter that uh, uh, characterizes the quantum Coulomb branch. Uh, so we have all ingredients from four dimension. And notice that we start seeing the appearance uh, of two different scales, uh, the two-dimensional one and the four-dimensional one, or if you like, two parameters, uh, tau here for the four-dimensional guy and t there for the two-dimensional guy, similarly to what we had in the monodromy uh, description. Then, by taking the resolvent and doing standard manipulation, it's possible to explicitly rewrite the vacuum equation in a very simple form. And given the expression for the characteristic polynomial of the cyber witten curve, to obtain the explicit form of the vacuum that solves this equation. In this case, it's just one sigma, because it's a U1, which for uh, has uh, the following expansion for large value of the uh, four-dimensional uh, uh, vacuum expectation value of phi. And I just wrote here the first uh, instant on uh, part, and then you can clearly expand it to higher orders. If we evaluate now this uh, uh, sup twisted superpotential on this vacuum solution, and therefore we find the minimum in a sense, then this is what we get, which is exactly the same form of the one that we obtain from looking at the Nekrasov-like integral. In particular, we have to identify lambda one square as, a, which goes like e to the two pi i t as a q one in the other approach, and this ratios of scales, uh, which go with the difference uh, tau minus t, uh, 
as a Q2. And uh, with this, we have a one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence here. I just wrote, for simplicity, the one instant on a term, but uh, clearly you can check that it works uh, at higher instant tones as well. Furthermore, by looking at uh, this uh, structure, we see that uh, there is a sort of a hierarchy of scales uh, in the sense that the four-dimensional uh, quantum scale must be smaller than the two-dimensional one because you cannot set uh, uh, lambda one to zero unless you have first uh, turned off the dynamics in four dimensions. So just uh, as uh, a brief uh, summary of what I told you so far, we have seen uh, uh, two uh, ways of describing surface operators, in which one in which uh, we identify in a four-dimensional theory a two-dimensional uh, slice where uh, the fields have a non-trivial uh, behavior. In this uh, case, we can compute the effective uh, superpotential for this uh, two-dimensional part of the theory from uh, equivariant localization, modifying the necras of partition function. The non-perturbative ingredients are the so-called ramified instantons, which are uh, weighted by several parameters, so, so we have many types of uh, in, uh, instantons. On the other side, we have seen uh, another description in which we start from a two-dimensional point of view and uh, we couple it non-trivially to four dimensions. In this case, uh, the W, the twisted superpotential, is obtained by, by looking at the vacuum equation of the infrared dynamics. And uh, we, generate, we see the dynamically generated scales, which are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the ramified instant on partition function. So there is a Q versus lambda map, so to say. And uh, the uh, prepotential evaluated on uh, the vacuum solution actually coincides term by term in all details uh, with uh, the localization result. Now, what uh, I've discussed uh, in this example for the simple SU2 theory with, uh, one, uh, uh, with the U1 inside can be generalized without uh, any problem to a more general uh, defect in SUN. And the resulting uh, theory is uh, a product of uh, UR gauge uh, theories in two dimensions with uh, bifundamental matters and coupled to a globally uh, SUN theory in four dimension, which uh, serves as a flavor for this node and so on and so forth. But then we gauge it in 4D to obtain the full coupling. This uh, quiver theory corresponds to a defect in which uh, the ranks and one and two and, and so on are related to the numbers which I put here by this, uh, uh, this formula. Uh, looking at it from uh, the 4D, uh, 2D point of view, by looking at the arrows and the ranks of the gauge group, it's a trivial exercise to write uh, the uh, twisted superpotential which is a generalization of what I discussed in the SU2 case, and uh, to work out uh, the vacuum equations, uh, find the solutions, uh, and evaluate the superpotential on the solution, and compare with the localization side. And what uh, we get is uh, a precise match, term by term, if you follow uh, the steps which I described. Actually, in uh, doing this check, uh, there is uh, one important uh, uh, point, uh, which, however, is, a is uh, uh, more technical. That's why I haven't talked about it so far. But uh, at this point, uh, it's uh, necessary to address uh, this question. If you uh, remember the necklace of partition function, uh, then uh, at higher instant tones, uh, they are usually uh, written as uh, multiple integrals. Similarly, for the ramified instant on partition functions, so they, are, they appear as multiple integrals. So uh, when uh, you want to compute uh, the explicitly the partition function, you have to specify 
the prescription with which you compute uh, these uh, multiple integrals. In other, and since uh, this is just at, the, at one instant, so it's uh, easy, since uh, these uh, integrands uh, are typically ratios of, of functions, uh, you have to look at the factors in the denominators and decide which poles uh, have to contribute that, which poles do not contribute. In other words, you have to select the contour uh, of integration. And uh, in this case uh, that uh, we worked last year, also this other collaboration uh, reached the same conclusion for the type of uh, surface operator I'm describing now, it turns out uh, that uh, uh, you have to make some choices, some specific choices for this contour. In particular, for the first uh, n minus 1 variables, you have to select the poles uh, with a plus epsilon. Namely, these are the factors that contribute. Whereas for the last one, uh, you have to select the other, the other factors. So the poles with minus epsilon. And if you uh, give the epsilon uh, an imaginary part uh, as it is usually done, then uh, that means uh, that for the first m minus 1 variables, you have to close your contour of integration in the upper half plane, whereas for the last variable, the one which is associated to the last 4D node, you have to close uh, the contour in the lower plane. So this is uh, actually the precise uh, 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 rule uh, that one has uh, to follow in order to have a one-to-one -one match between the two descriptions. These are the two-dimensional nodes and the corresponding variables for these two-dimensional nodes have to be integrated in the upper half plane, whereas uh, this is uh, the last node which has a four-dimensional uh, nature and the corresponding variable has to be integrated in the lower plane. Uh, there is a very nice uh, way of uh, uh, giving uh, this uh, prescription in terms of a Jeffrey Kiwan uh, residue uh, prescription corresponding to a reference vector eta, which uh, uh, in my no notation corresponds to introduce uh, this uh, uh, Jeffrey Kiwan vector eta, which has the following form, which has a minus signs. Uh, for all uh, these uh, variables and a plus sign with a positive uh, parameter, an arbitrary parameter so far, for the lowest one. Notice that uh, these minus signs are actually correlated to the uh, signs of the beta functions for the Fayet-Lyopoulos couplings of all these uh, two-dimensional nodes. And uh, actually, you can uh, rewrite uh, this uh, Jeffrey Kiban parameter in a more uh, suggestive way by introducing not only minus, but also minus psi 1, minus psi 2, and so on, where these are the Fayet-Lyopoulos couplings uh, of these uh, two-dimensional nodes, which, uh, given the hierarchy of scales, which I mentioned before, are actually ordered in this way. So if... Uh, you give me a quiver of this form, then by looking at the ranks of the various nodes, and therefore by knowing the dimension of the various representations, I can compute easily the beta functions for the Fayet-Yopoulos couplings and see whether the uh, beta function is positive or negative. In this case, for this ordered sequence, all beta functions are positives, positive, and therefore, uh, according to this proposal, uh, I write this uh, Jeffrey Kiwan uh, vector, and with that I compute in a non-ambiguous uh, way the uh, Necrasov-like uh, partition function. And I find exactly the same result uh, as from the uh, dynamical analysis. And uh, uh, actually, at, at this point, uh, one uh, would like to understand uh, why is so if there is a rational between, uh, among all the, these uh, uh, things, and if there is a possibility of understanding this uh, uh, sort of uh, prescription, and what is the meaning. And uh, in order to address the, 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 this question, uh, I introduce now another piece of information, namely duality. Uh, 
We know very well that a two-dimensional UR theory with some fundamentals and anti-fundamental representation uh, has an effective uh, theory and in, in the infrared. And this same effective theory in the infrared can be given a very different uh, ultraviolet description in terms of another theory in which uh, the groups are different, so NF minus R in this case, and in which the arrows are exchanged and there are even uh, connecting lines in this way. This is a, a duality, a cyborg a duality applied to this uh, two-dimensional uh, system. So, for example, if we start for, from the effective superpotential for this uh, node, you are, I just write the classical term, is a 2 pi i t trace sigma, then the theory B has an ultraviolet description in which the superpotential is this, but these two theories share the same infrared behavior. Notice that in going from theory A to theory B, the sign of uh, the uh, Fayet-Lyopoulos uh, uh, coupling has changed uh, as it always happened in this uh, duality. So we can do the same kind of uh, tricks in our uh, quiver theories. And uh, we can uh, take uh, a quiver theory, like the one I, I described before, and apply to it uh, one of these uh, dualities. For example, if I am in the middle of a chain and I dualize uh, this node in which uh, we have both uh, anti-fundamental and fundamental matter, then uh, using uh, the duality rules that I described before, if I start from uh, this uh, superpotential classical part, uh, which is uh, very simple to understand, then I get, uh, you applying the previous rule, a superpotential for this uh, theory in which uh, this sign has changed and also this uh, has uh, shifted because uh, the neighboring nodes uh, in these uh, quiver theories uh, provide essentially masses uh, for the uh, twisted cover fields. Uh, so this is uh, uh, what we have to use uh, in this formula. But it may happen that uh, I am in a theory in which a node has only outgoing arrows, so only fundamental matters, matter, and in this case, uh, the rules are a little bit different, even though they follow exactly from uh, the same uh, basic movement that I described before. And uh, this is the result. And now, under this duality, both uh, the coupling of the left and of the right node is affected. So uh, we can uh, take, uh, for example, a four-node quiver that corresponds to a surface defect in which the gauge group SUN is broken into four pieces. This is of the type I described before. Then we can apply, for example, a duality and go to this other quiver. And then uh, we can uh, do a third duality and so on and so forth. And, uh, all the way down, we end up with a quiver which is uh, very different from the previous one in which the arrows are all going in the other directions. All these uh, quiver theories are different ultraviolet description, but uh, they share the same infrared dynamics. And as I told you, the infrared dynamics is described by the effective superpotential evaluated in the vacuum, so they should correspond to the same surface operators, and they should describe the same infrared physics. So they are different uh, description of the same, uh, of the same uh, surface operator. For each one of them, uh, we can start uh, from the classical term uh, using our duality rules and uh, compute, for example, after one step, this, uh, this is the classical part of the superpotential, and then uh, all the way down uh, till uh, we reach uh, the bottom. Of course, this is just a classical part, but then there is the quantum part, and then we have to treat it in the way that I described in the simplest SU2 case. And if you do that, uh, you can uh, get a lot of information. You can work out uh, in all of these uh, quivers, take any one of, of, of them, the Q versus lambda map, for example, for uh, the second quiver in this uh, chain, 
uh, the Q versus the lambda map is uh, different, of course, uh, with respect to what we had uh, in the first quiver, because the beta functions are different. These numbers are essentially the beta functions for the running of the couplings. So we have uh, different infrared scales, which, however, all map through a different, uh, with a different uh, expressions to the Q1, Q2, and Q3. In this case, uh, the three node and the corresponding three types of ramified instant on. For all of them, uh, the fourth ramified instant on is always uh, related to the four-dimensional scale. And then if uh, we, as I pointed out here, in going from this uh, uh, quiver to this other quiver, we change the sign in the Fayet-Liopoulos term of the first node, the one that is uh, dualized. And if you buy the proposal that I gave uh, you about the Jeffrey Kirwan vector, then I have to change the sign in uh, the first entry of of, of the Jeffrey Kirwan vector because now uh, this uh, beta function has a different sign. And if I take uh, this uh, Jeffrey Kirwan vector and I use it in the localization formula, I get exactly the same structure term by term for the second quiver in the duality. So now we see a general, uh, a general uh, structure emerging in which uh, for various quivers uh, we can uh, have a precise match between uh, the two approaches. That works uh, not only for the linear quivers uh, that I have uh, here, but also for quivers in which uh, you have uh, also loops inside. So the outline of this argument uh, that tells us uh, why all uh, these uh, different quivers uh, lead to the same infrared uh, dynamics is that because, uh, after all, uh, they only differ because of the change of integration contours in uh, the necros of light partition function. So different choices of integration contours, which means uh, different choices of uh, Jeffrey Kirwan reference vectors, uh, namely poles that you pick uh, upstairs or, or downstairs in the complex plane, lead to different, uh, uh, different expressions, which, however, are one -to -one, in one-to-one -one correspondence uh, with the terms uh, in uh, uh, dynamical description. And simply because uh, all results are differed by a change of contours, and in this case, for this non-conformal asymptotic free theories, the integrands do not have residues at infinity. It is obvious by a residue theorem that the result is always the same for all different choices of contours. But now we understand that picking one contour of integration or another corresponds to picking a duality frame and having a correspond different ultraviolet description. So I come to my conclusions. I described the surface operators in essentially two different ways. One with the idea of assigning non-trivial boundary conditions and singular behaviors to the fields over which I perform my path integral. The other has coupled systems in which a two-dimensional gauge linear sigma model is coupled with a four-dimensional gauge a theory in four dimensions. And there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the different, uh, the different quantities in the two uh, types of descriptions. The monodromy vector, which tells me how the SUN, in this case, uh, uh, symmetry group is uh, broken by the presence of the defect, translate into this uh, a description in the ranks of the two-dimensional gauge groups uh, that form the quiver theory. The vacuum expectation values uh, in four dimensions uh, become uh, twisted masses uh, from the two-dimensional point of view. The ramified instant on counting parameters uh, from uh, this approach uh, are nothing but another way of writing the dimensionally, the dynamically generated scales uh, in uh, this uh, quiver approach. 
the super potential uh, that is obtained from uh, localization a la Canon Tachikawa actually coincides uh, with uh, the uh, twisted super potential evaluated in the vacuum. The choice of integration contours uh, in uh, the localization approach actually corresponds to picking a particular duality frame and telling in which, uh, of the, uh, or in which step of the duality chain you are. What uh, I described here for the pure theories, uh, uh, n equals two theories in uh, four dimensions, uh, actually can be generalized for other types of systems, like uh, theory uh, uh, n equal two star theories. And these are uh, different because the necros of like integrals now have also a numerator of factors, so now the question of changing the contours is not, uh, is not irrelevant anymore. Or as uh, QCD uh, with a fundamental matter, but even uh, uh, this is quite interesting because uh, if uh, the amount of matter is such that uh, these uh, theories are conformal in each node, then again uh, the issue of uh, Changing the contour integration is not uh, trivial. Uh, we can uplift uh, this uh, discussion to systems in one dimension higher, and so describe uh, uh, surface uh, operators in a five-dimensional uh, theories, maybe with the uh, Chen-Simons interactions. And they also will describe in the three uh, dimension has uh, three-dimensional theories uh, with uh, Chen Simons, and there is a, a nice interplay between uh, the Chen Simons parameters uh, in three dimensions and in five dimensions. Or, and this has uh, to be done, extend uh, these analysis uh, to other types of uh, quiver theories uh, with other uh, classical groups, orthogonal uh, symplecty. And it would be also very nice uh, to explore the connection with integrable models. Uh, yesterday we had a talk in which there was such a connection uh, between uh, the vacuum equation, x of dw or d sigma equal one, uh, and uh, the integrable models. It would be nice uh, to understand uh, all these uh, in this context. So I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.